you said that you're worried about the interior offensive line. Yeah. You think they should bring in another center. Yeah. But let's assume that that's not something they decide to do. Yeah. Who do you think is ultimately going to start day one? Brunskill or Brendel and why? Oh, if it's only between those two, it's Brendel. I don't think Brunskill's a center. I mean, how many positions does do you expect the guy to play? He's played tackle and guard an acceptable level. I don't know why they get in this. They got this. They got it in their head that he can play all three positions. Uh, I think we've seen him play the position before, and just snapping the ball was an issue for him. He doesn't have that much experience. He doesn't have a. I mean, he's, his snaps are errant to me. Like if he's starting, he's a turnover waiting to happen. You you have to worry about that. At least with Brendel, he can snap the ball, and you're more worried like can he block? But from what I've seen in in training camp, it's not like Brunskill's any better at blocking. So I think Brendel will start if that's the only option, but I'm not looking at him being like, oh, yeah, that's definitely a starting center in the NFL. Yeah. He looks like a guy who is really struggling against a very good defensive line and probably is better suited to be the backup he's been his whole freaking career. Sorry. Fellow Bruin. Sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, uh, listen, it is what it is, but you know, I also think looking at Brunskill because he can play both guard and center. Yeah. I think it's better for the team that he probably is the backup because an injury probably happens at some point. And when it does, you know that you can trust Brunskill to come off the bench and at least hold it together, probably at either position. Not good enough to start, but hold it together. One thing that amazes me is that I feel like he's done at right guard. They're done with him. They have Burford there. They like Burford. I didn't know they like Burford. He looks pretty good, and I got to say he does look pretty good. He's had all the reps with the first team at right guard. It's like, wait, okay, so I didn't really understand what the Niners thought of their team coming into the offseason. A lot happened in that fourth quarter of the Rams game. Tart messed up. He's out. That's clear the Niners were done with him. But Brunskill also had a very tough fourth quarter. People you know, make fun of him saying he's Aaron Donald's daddy. Not in that fourth quarter, let me say. No, no. no Aaron Donald really worked him. He And Jimmy Garoppolo was bad, and, and Kyle sh- struggled, but Daniel Brunskill got worked. And um, maybe they were like, you know what? We have to get better at right guard because we have to actually match up with Aaron Donald maybe three times a year. So um, I <laughs> Brunskill's on the way. I feel like they're phasing him out is what I'm trying to say. But I, and I don't think any of us expected that. Like, okay, when we talked about the offensive line issues, because this has been a, a topic at hand for a, a long time in the Niner community, right? We've all had conversations about it. The assumption always was, okay, we know who the left tackle is. We know the right tackle is. We know who's playing right guard. How good is Aaron Banks? And what do they do at center? Right? And so then they draft. Well, they sign West as a, as a free agent, you know, undrafted free agent. Like, okay, well, he's the backup. They're grooming him for the future. And then they get into camp and we're like, uh, Brunskill's playing center yeah. now. He's not the right guard. What they I don't think anybody draft expected two that. Guards. They drafted two guards. Yeah. Zakel too, who I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write him off, but not yeah. <laughs> well I'm sorry. I just I don't know. But but again, he's a rookie. He could totally change and grow and stuff, but whoa. Uh whoa. He's a six round pick though. What are you really expecting from Fordham? For sure. I think he's For probably sure. gonna look like a, he looks like a college player. Really looks like a college player. Burford looks like a pro. Man, where'd they get that guy from? Might be their best <laughs> pick so far. Him. That's good. Although That's actually good. Drake Jackson, too, man. Drake Jackson is really good. <laughs> I just want to say that. He's really and I I've kind of like been like, you know, he didn't feel a need. They could have got an offensive lineman. Yeah, but that dude's really good. You talk about uh, on paper, we don't really know what he's going to be yet, but I have a feeling that he's going to be. I was before I was looking up D Ford's numbers that year in 2019, 11 games, six and a half sacks. I think I think Drake Jackson could do better than that. I think he's going to be getting the third down reps immediately. And I think he's I mean, going to do really well, really well. Imagine Bosa, Minahu. Armstead and Jackson on third down no give him any with respect. a secondary that's that good. Oh my God. Yeah. No one's going to give him any respect. Here's another thing too, like what the Niners defense is doing. So they have all this pressure, all this pass rush. And instead of playing 10 yards off, they're playing all up in your face and they're sort of forcing low percentage throws. 
Because what's the point of having a pass rush if you're going to concede high percentage throws? Here, Here's the five-yard throw. What's the point? They're going to take it because there's no point in holding the ball. But if you take those away, your options are really screwed. Like, And I think Lance understands that, and he's throwing a lot of low percentage throws. It's like, okay, well, I'll throw deep. Uh, what are my options? It's not like you're getting open in two seconds. So right. I'll hold it. I'll buy some time. I'll throw deep. Or – I'll just get the ball and throw deep right away. He's throwing a lot of deep passes. I feel like he's saying, I mean, if you can win a slant, fine, but you're not. Sorry. Even I, it's tough times. Well, if you remember last year, they had issues on third down, and it really started to show up during the Titans game. And then it showed up again in week 18 and then really lost them their season in the NFC Championship. They couldn't get off the field in third down and long. It was the weirdest thing. They would win easily on first and second down, put themselves in a great position in third down, and then just blow it. And now they're like, no, no, no. We're going to play press man. We're going to allow the pass rush to do its thing. We got guys that can play press man. Good luck trying to beat us because you're not going to have a lot of time. We're going to jam your receiver. We're going to give you even less time. And I think what you're going to see a lot this year is a lot of turnovers on third down because quarterbacks are going to try to force it in there and either get strip sacked or just throw a bad pass. I expect a lot of third down turnovers when it's third and long. I really do. Edgardo Rodriguez says if Verrett is healthy, him or Mosley for CB2. If Verrett's healthy, he's CB1. Sorry. You he's think so? Good. He's that good. He is that good. Ward is good. Verrett is better. I mean – He's top five corner in the league, one healthy. I don't really expect him to ever be that ever again. But in this theoretical world where 31-year-old Verrett makes a full recovery and plays like he did when he was 29, yes, that won't happen, though. Sorry. I'm not betting. I mean, I'm betting against you. Sorry. But I'm just That's saying, crazy. He's that good. Yeah, he's that good. Because you're uh, hearing so many good things about Mosley and Trey's award. No, yeah. Mosley's good, too. They got to get him in the slot if that happens. Dude, how do you, how you say that? Scribe, I can't even do that. Scribe minds? Is it just scribe minds? Mind? The floor for Trey is year two McNabb, and McNabb used to miss passes into the dirt. Trey is accurate enough. If he were Josh Rosen or Kyle Bowler, we'd know by now. Top 10 quarterback barring injury. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's basically right. He's accurate enough for what he is, which is not a pocket quarterback. You know, he's good enough in the pocket. He's accurate enough. But what you want is the total package, and that's what he gives you. Yep, agree. The coach says, given his current status approximately a year ago, I got to give Aaron Banks his flowers. The young man has shown seriousness of the craft. He was given a tall task. So far, he's delivered. Agreed. He is completely earnest in whatever the Niners tell him to do, he does. What I want to say, though, is I uh, – so hold on. D'Amico was asked today about Kinlaw. And they're like, how's he doing? And he's like, oh, he looks great. I always – it's the same thing with him. He said, I always say to Javon Kinlaw, technique, 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 every time I see him. That was funny which to me means pad level, pad level, pad level. Because with Kinlaw, what I still see is is a guy who pops up and often is ended up like trying to knock down passes because he didn't get – if he could – like Armstead's taller than Kinlaw. Armstead has great pad level. Armstead's a freaking forklift. Kinlaw hasn't perfected that yet. Banks. Banks is a huge man. He's re rebuilt his body. Great shape. Big dude. I don't know what the coaches saw. All I know is in one-on-ones, he went up against Alex Barrett, who's been doing a little defensive tackle. He's 250 pounds. He came in with a plan against Aaron Banks. He did it three times. He got underneath his pads and just bull rushed him back and put him on skates three times. Now, maybe Alex Barrett saw it on film or the offensive line coach or the defensive line coach saw it on film, but the word was out, hey, the guy, the guy uh, pops up. You can get underneath him. He has no leverage. He has no anchor. So Banks, that's technique. Just <laughs> working that pad level, baby, because you're a big guy. You need to be able to use that strength. You should not let 250-pound defensive ends walk you into the quarterback's lap like that. It's a bad look. Anyway. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the wor worry about him. I mean, I remember Croc talking about it. looked like he had two left feet last year, right? And so Ooh. he certainly did come in and, and lose the weight. Looks good. He's back at his natural position. I have high hopes for Banks, but yeah, he, he can't be getting walked back in the quarterback's lap by a much smaller men. That's, that's that was alarming. Meanwhile, you have uh freaking um Burford like anchoring 22 year old. 
that you're expecting, oh, he's lanky, he's long, he's young. He's not going to be strong. He's going to get pushed around. Nope. He's good. Do you think Burford is better? Yep. I think <laughs> Burford is the Niners' best interior offensive lineman. I think he's so talented he might be able to play some tackle, and he might be one of the best stories at camp. Jalen Moore was not practicing today. I don't know what happened. Um, he wasn't even suited up. But this guy, Burford, is way better than Jalen Moore. Way better. Way better. Preston Renner is playing out of position, though, too. I, I, Kyle Shanahan, after the draft, when they drafted Moore, said that he's going guard. to play guard. That's guard. the future. Guard. He's done anything but that. It's extremely weird. It is because he's. I think we've seen enough of him at tackle. Preston says, really think Poe eventually contends for Banks' job. Agree. I like Poe. Now, <clears throat> he hasn't gone up against any starters yet, but he's beating people who are beating Brunskill. Brunskill's losing to everyone, which is never good. Um, Poe is so strong. He's little, but he's strong. He's athletic. He's like Shaq Mason. I think he could eventually be a starter, too. I don't know if he'll be a starter this year, but he's got potential. He can really anchor. You, you can't get underneath his pads. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Lower man always wins. That's, you know. He's the low man. Forever. Mike Downey says, you can guarantee three players don't get hurt this season. Who do you pick? What? What? What are you talking about? What uh, parallel universe is this? Is this Madden? Who do they who do they most need to play every single game? Let's go. Let's go that route. Let's go Javon, that route. Javon, Javon, well, nose tackle. I can't say a nose tackle means that much. The quarterback, the defensive end, and Debo. I mean, that's the answer, right? Quarterback, the Bosa, and that's, that's it. That's what it is. I think Trent Williams. I think Trent Williams Trent has Williams. to be in there because the offensive line is shambles. If they don't have Trent Williams, let's take let's take Bosa out of it. Let's take the three guys in the offense, even though it's a defensive driven team. It is. That, that's correct. If they lose Debo, screwed. Lose Trey Williams, screwed. Lose Trey Lance, screwed. Yep. They lost Bosa and had a top five defense. They lost Bosa and shut down the number one offense in the league on the road for a half. You're right. Very interesting. Yeah. Offensive driven league.